Good afternoon. It's Friday the 19th of uh, December 2014, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host, Brian Gerrish. With me in the studio, Mike Robinson. And uh, behind the technical desk is Nick Green. Slight sound grip glitch there at the beginning of the programme. Well, the weather here in Plymouth, not too bad at all. So there's a lot of reasonably chirpy people across, uh, around. Um, Penzance, unfortunately, is a bit grey. Accrington is not bad. It's sunny in Pembrokeshire, and that's the key to success. So there we are. And, uh, of course, this will be our last uh, uh, live broadcast for 2014. Stay with us. Over to you, Mike. Uh, well, yes, OK. Uh, we're starting off with, uh, with I suppose, war, <clears throat> because in a sense, that's exactly what we've got at the moment. Well, we live in Britain, and uh, Britain, of course, is working very hard globally in order to induce as much war as possible. So typical Christmassy feel for the start of the programme. Um, here we've got uh, global research here saying loss of control. The current financial bubble is busting. Uh, and uh, I'll just read the first paragraph here because it's quite interesting. I think many... Many commentators in the alternative media will feel uh, sympathy with it, with these sentiments. He says, uh, uh, many who will read this work have been sitting patiently waiting for the house of cards to collapse. For me personally, I confess the current maniacal financial bubble has gone on much longer than I ever imagined. What did we miss? Are we wrong or just early? In my opinion, we are early, mathematically correct, yet the rules changed. For my, my part, I can say that I missed just how much leverage could be used to extend the game. In the current instance, we're not even talking about garden variety lev leverage. We live in a world where leverage is leveraged, leveraged again and again and again. We have personal, public and private OTC leverage. The garden variety leverage is bad enough as, sov sorry, bad enough as sovereign leverage, but the real problem are derivatives piled, piled on top of derivatives with collateral, which many in many cases no longer even exists. Too much leverage in the past has always led to burst bubbles. All bubbles eventually burst, and it looks like this one is bursting now. And he goes on to say, really, that, that this great Ponzi scheme that, we, uh, that we've been existing under in the global financial system uh, really is running completely out of control at this point, and we're seeing the complete you know, total collapse everywhere. Um, and, uh, of course, although it's a, a game being played by only a few, um, everybody is going to suffer, to suffer. And of course, the big uh, commodity news anyway is the con continuing collapse of oil prices. And here the BBC reporting that North Sea oil industry close to collapse. And this is a result of the collapsing oil price. They're saying oil companies and service providers are cutting staff and investment to save money. Uh, they're saying, you know, Robin Allen, chairman of the Independent Explorers Association, uh, Brindex, or Brindex, sorry, uh, told the BBC that the industry was close to collapse. Um, but of course, um, what is going on here? Uh, it's, not just, it's not just that the financial system is in a state of collapse, which it is. Um, of course, there are geopolitical games being played here, and we'll come on to that in a second. I just wanted, before we come on to that, mention this Guardian article here, because they're talk, also talking about the price of crude oil and saying while, why the pr plunging price of oil is not all good news. And they list four or five main items here, which I'm not going to go into because most of them, for most people, would be reasonably good news. But the only one that they're talking about that is particularly bad news is the last one saying lower, lower oil and gas prices could fatally undermine the government's desire to see a shale industry take off in Britain. And The Guardian suggesting this is, this is bad news. Uh, I think this is brilliant news, but unfortunately the price that we may have to pay for that uh, isn't going to do us any good because, of course, uh, what is at the end of this oil price manipulation? Uh, Russia is at the end, uh, Russia and Iran, uh, and uh, but really Russia, the main target of this. This is an act of war. Uh, we are at war. Um, uh, there are a number of authors recently have been talking about currency wars. Um, this is exactly what is going on here. This oil price uh, manipulation is also linked to the uh, um, currency price manipulation, which is seeing uh, the ruble uh, in trouble. Now, Putin uh, on national television in the last day or two, um, giving his annual speech, to, uh, sort of state of the nation type of uh, talk, uh, and uh, of course saying that uh, really Russia is going to survive this without too much difficulty. The question in my mind, as the uh, original author in the Global Research article was talking about, uh, was is, is uh, really, um, the question is, is the Western financial system capable of surviving it? 
and I think that's very unlikely. So these guys completely out of control. They have uh, they're again pushing certain buttons in an effort to uh, achieve a geopolitical goal. Uh, and really, the financial system as a whole in the West is not capable of actually uh, dealing with with the buttons that they're pressing. So, so the the simple undertone is we've got corrupt financial worldwide financial institutions driving not only a political agenda, but they're driving that political agenda to help promote international wars and violence. Well, somebody is driving the corrupt financial system for that purpose, indeed. Mm. Um, and, uh, and of course, the financial system themselves aren't really capable of, uh, of maintaining the, the pressure on Russia on the long term because they're going to be dead before Russia is, I think. Yeah, and of course, we're hearing almost nothing at the moment about uh, China and I, I cannot believe that uh, uh, there are not some in-depth discussions going on between uh, Putin and the Chinese. Are the Chinese likely to abandon Russia in the face of, uh, of uh, what, what uh, America and uh, Europe and UK are doing? I don't think so. No, because the other axis of this, of course, is the, is the whole BRICS initiative. And now we've got India um, absolutely uh, launching again another... Uh, large rocket into, into space. So they're talking about uh, manned space uh, missions in the not too distant yeah. future. Russia, China, India, Brazil, and these countries that are joining them, building infrastructure. They don't really need the Western financial system. Um, and that's really why the Western financial system is absolutely desperate to try and do anything that they can to destroy this, uh, this, this initiative. And, and Russia is the first target of this. Right, okay, where do we go from there? Well, well back, back, back home, home of course, yeah. uh, the constitutional reform agenda rumbles on, and here we've got the uh, Law Commission holding an event in January 2015 on the issue of reforming elect uh, electoral law. And they're saying that electoral law has, in the UK has grown complex, voluminous, and fragmented with many statutes and, sorry, excuse me, secondary legislation governing a long list of elections and referendums. Of course, if we weren't joining uh, supranational states. We wouldn't have a long list of uh, elections and referendums. Uh, but of course, uh, these uh, elections and referendums have resulted in a load of uh, statute, which the uh, Law Commission here is suggesting needs to be reformed. And this, again, is another string to the uh, constitutional reform bow. Uh, and uh, just yet another uh, attack on the Constitution. So once again, let's just keep in mind that only eight weeks after we return in the uh, new year, um, we have uh, our uh, conference in Telford on the 20th of February, 1st of March. Please get there if you can. This, the aim of this conference is to get people organised to take part in the electoral process coming into the general election. So this is less a us talking to, to an audience yeah. and more a get an audience inspired and involved to actually get involved in the electoral process in May. Really important that, it, that you get there if you can. Uh, and uh, I'll just say that that um, most of the, any money that's raised for the, at that conference is going to be used um, to, to help um, anybody that wants to get involved in the electoral process do so. Leaflets, travel costs, whatever it happens to be, um, we're not there to make a profit for us. We want to give that money out to you guys to do things. So that's the point of the thing. <laughs> Last uh, day of the year, we're having problems. Okay, moving on then. Uh, this is an interesting story. Uh, this is the uh, UK electricity supply um, auction worth 1.8 billion a year. Uh, it's set to begin today, according to the, at least the government has announced the, uh, the outcome of this. Um, and uh, this is the FT reporting this, 1.8 billion, billion a year. Who's it going to, do you think? Private companies. Private companies. So what we're talking about here is the uh, energy companies uh, getting uh, 1.8 billion of, of taxpayers' money handed to them. What basically happened was that the government decided that, uh, oh dear, we're having to sh switch off some power stations. If you think back to the very beginning of the year, uh, if you think back to the very beginning of the year, this is one of the issues that, that I was talking about. The fact that in this in this uh, uh, in this year, um, coal-fired power stations were going to have to be uh, uh, were going to be switched off as a result of. Uh, EU legislation and that we were going to have a shortage of generator capacity in this country and that's what this is about. So in an effort to try and get the uh, privatised energy companies who we give uh, our infrastructure away to and who have invested nothing in, um, 
in order to get them to build new infrastructure, we're basically now giving them a subsidy of £1.8 billion. Uh, and on top of that, in order to pay for that, of course, that subsidy is going to be paid for through your energy bills and most likely it's going to be a sort of £15 a year uh, increase in energy bills to pay for this. Uh, so what, what in fact happened over the uh, uh, energy privatisation uh, was that uh, companies, just as with water and other uh, uh, private, similar privatisations, um, the uh, government sold these uh, infrastructures off to the uh, private companies who then effectively asset stripped uh, the situation. They did not invest the amount of money needed uh, to guarantee future supply and they've come cap in hand back to the government in order to meet that, uh, that demand. Uh, and uh, here we are, £1.8 billion, uh, but we have no money. Just well, hopefully uh, we're back uh, with vision and sound. And uh, some of you may have caught uh, a bit of a glimpse of the uh, sound check there. Well, heard it even. So hopefully uh, we're going out okay. Yes, yeah. So um, against the background of war manipulation of the internet, national money markets to make that war against the collapse of UK, the attack on... Uh, family life and of course the attack on our children. Uh, what is driving all of this? Well, of course, it is being driven by the people that we have elected to be in power. And the issue which is coming to the fore um, increasingly, of course, is um, paedophile activity, both in Westminster and the establishment. So we're just going to have a look at a couple of things that are appearing on the internet. Recommend that you have a read of the TAP uh, blog and interestingly here we have straight away a grand jury Vancouver grand jury investigates child trafficking and the snuff snuff move industry and uh, interesting that they're stating here that the Queen is going to ab abdicate January 2015 now yesterday uh, we reported that um, one of the bookies wasn't taking any more bets on that we haven't got any further information but obviously the tap blog uh, thinks that there's some credibility into it. Well, interesting north of the border as well, because uh, the Scottish government has now uh, formally announced its inquiry into international uh, institutional child abuse. And it's the educational secretary, uh, Angela Constance. Um, uh, she's announced this public inquiry. And the magic word is in there, historical. So we're not interested in any child abuse which is actually taking place today. The important thing is to get public attention um, diverted on the fact that it's really all historical. Uh, sorry to be a little bit cynical there. Nick will be putting a cynicism alert out shortly. Um, this is part of the text, but do go and read it yourself. This parliament, remember this is north of the border, this parliament must always be on the side of victims of abuse. We must have the truth of what happened to them and how those organisations and individuals into whose care the children were entrusted failed them so catastrophically. And to get to that truth, we will be establishing a national public inquiry into the historical abuse of children in institutional uh, care. So there's two little nice smoke screens there. Of course, it's historic and we're only really going to look at the children that were in institutional care. What about the children that weren't in institutional care? However, I think many people would say, well, at least it's moving north of the border. And um, uh, of course, it should bring uh, the name Robert uh, Green into many people's uh, minds. A very brave man who's consistently spoken out uh, to expose child abuse north of the border and of course a man who has as a result spent uh, two periods in prison much he's, the same going on in England of course he's back in court yes um, Robert Green will of course be in court um, January 2015 um, I don't believe that there has been a specific date set for that I'm still waiting for news if that's incorrect I I will tweet out what the correct date is. Uh, but of course, Robert Green, who's who spent uh, 200 days or something effectively out of house arrest. Uh, what is this man's crime? Well, he's been brave enough to stand out, stand up and speak publicly on the subject of child abuse. Well, we were a little bit um, cutting on Ixaro yesterday, who were busy tweeting that nobody must report on Ben Fellows another brave individual who's been speaking out about child abuse. 
Uh, but here's the Xaro headline if we bring it on screen. Police privately admit a cover-up for paedophile MPs and VIPs. Uh, this is part of their text. I'm going to encourage you to go to the Xaro site and read this article yourself. Uh, but he, and the man was a detective inspector, used to tell you, so this is, this is a policeman talking about his colleague, he, the detective inspector, used to tell us about an op he was on which uncovered pedos at the highest parts of the government and society. Uh, then he told how Special Branch shut it all down in one day. They took all the files and evidence. And um, this is another quote on the uh, Exaro site. It says, this is about kids being raped by those in power that included politicians of all sorts. And that amazing quote comes, according to Ixaro, from an ex-Met uh, police officer of 30 years experience. So if we don't understand why Britain at the moment is sli sliding into absolute chaos and breakdown, the answer is because we are being ruled by people who are either in and governed by people who are either involved in paedophilia themselves or they're covering up for that paedophilia or they're unbelievably ignorant. And of course, the police who should be doing the prime job in uncovering this vile abuse of children have themselves been involved in it and certainly involved in the cover up. So we shouldn't have any real wonders about what's going on in Britain today because until the British government is cleaned up, uh, this chaos and breakdown is just going to get worse. Um, we summarise it in a very simple way. So let's come, come back to the Exaro quote. And here it is. This is about kids being raped by those in power. And it included politicians of all sorts. Uh, well, let's just have a think. We've, of course, had Jimmy Savile, a man who government ministers gave access to mental health facilities, hospitals, schools, and the BBC supposedly priding itself on truthful reporting well, boy, they didn't want to talk too much about what was going on in the BBC. And um, what else has been going on? Uh, well, of course, William Hague is now speaking out about uh, fairness. And he says in order for things to be fair in England and Scotland and Wales, certain things need to happen. But of course, there can be no fairness whilst we have such corruption in Westminster that it... Uh, uh, perpetrates child abuse and covers up for child abuse. And the hypocrisy here will just highlight, of course, that whilst this cesspit is taking place in Britain, we are on the international stage. Uh, well, David Cameron, of course, is lecturing President Putin on how he should conduct business in, in Russia. Uh, so we're ending 2014 on a pretty hard note. But until Britain cleans up the filth that inhabits the establishment, Westminster and the police, of course, there can be no fairness and no justice. And if we've got neither of fairness or justice, then, of course, we aren't living in any form of uh, democracy. Mm. So we would like to um, mention Ben Fellows. Uh, ben Fellows uh, is in Wormwood Scrubs. And uh, if you like to freeze the screen, um, you can take down the details. Uh, but if you want to write to uh, Ben Fellows, his prison number is A5289 Delta Juliet. That's DJ. And the address is HM Prison Wormwood Scrubs, PO Box 757, Duquesne Road, London, W12, uh, 0AE. And do remember to put your name and address on the back of the card and say inside if you're sending anything. Very important, important that you adhere to the prison rules. Otherwise, that correspondence won't get through. What would Ben like to know? Well, of course, Ben would like to know that he's got uh, many, many members of the general public supporting him, thinking of him. And of course, he is going to need as many people as possible to attend Southwark Crown Court on December the 29th, which is when he's due to appear in court. And as always, uh, um, as many members of the public present as possible is, is what is needed. People behaving 
uh, quietly, peacefully, respectfully, uh, but to be there in court in numbers uh, so that uh, they can see justice being done. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we will report anything more we can by tweet or whatever over the next few days. Uh, but Ben Fellows has been unbelievably brave. And of course, what was he saying publicly uh, that he was threatened and intimidated by British police who said that some members of Westminster uh, were just too powerful for the police to investigate allegations against them. So people above the law, Mike. No. Oh. <laughs> Somebody suggested that we should bring back the Bonio box, and uh, sometimes we feel like it. We'll think about that yeah. for the new year. But um, where do we go from there? Well, we're simply going to say a very big thank you um, to all our viewers, listeners, supporters. A very happy Christmas. Uh, we'll be back live um, 1 o'clock Wednesday, the 7th of January, 2015, uh, UK Column predicts this is going to be a momentous year where people are going to need to be, um, I think some people are going to need to be quite brave because I'm predicting that uh, some people are going to be shocked at the venom uh, that this government unleashes on the general public and the speed at which events take place. And my personal concern is that we are going to see some very interesting and dirty political deals uh, which enables the election to be manipulated in order to form one super coalition. And I believe that there will be massive political manoeuvring in, uh, in order to try and draw UKIP into that coalition. And of course, once we have a coalition of all parties, uh, we have the single party police state yes. in force couldn't agree more actually and uh, i think ukip if, if there are ukip grassroots uh, members watching this i think uh, ukip in particular is probably the party that's at most danger of uh, being finding manipulated it, yes absolutely it's your 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 position is going to be changed somewhat from what from the position you think you would like to be in is my opinion yeah so do have a good um, Christmas break. Um, relax where you can. Uh, rest where you can. Spend good time with your family and friends. Very important. Um, in the battles that are coming ahead, it's going to be uh, very important that we're all um, relaxed and at our best. So if you can get a break over Christmas, please do. The moment the new year starts, um, this country is going to need as many good men and women as it can possibly get. Doing so, things. Doing things. Mm. We hope you'll be there. Thank you for that. We'll see you in the new year. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.